So here we have an Olympus BX50. This is considered to be a research grade microscope. And as we go through the components that are on this microscope, you'll quickly understand why that is. First of all, starting at the very top, we have a diopter that's adjustable on the trinocular head on the left side. The right side is, is fixed. We have a trinocular port on the very top which allows you to put an adapter here, whether it's for a video camera or a digital camera. And we also have a light path selector on the right hand side which is a three position light path selector. Most ordinary trinoculars are either fixed with one position or two positions. This one has a three position light path selector. When the knob is pushed all the way in, you have 100% of the light to the eyepieces. When it's in the second position, you have 20% of the light to the eyepieces and 80% of the light to the camera. When it's pulled all the way out, you have 100% of the light to the camera. Most people work with it in this position, which gives you all of the light to the eyepieces. Moving our way down, we have a six-place nose piece. There are three objective lenses on this microscope. They're all plan acromat lenses. This is a 10x infinity corrected. The next one over is a 50 oil objective lens, which has an iris diaphragm. And the third one is a U-Plan Fluorite 100X uh, objective lens with, also with an iris diaphragm. The iris diaphragms are great for fluorescence. They're also great for phase contrast or for dark field. Moving our way down, we have a, a right-hand mechanical stage. The insert on this is ceramic. The specimen holder is removable. The controls for the low position coaxial mechanical stage are also tension, self-tension adjustable. This top and bottom knurled ring uh, apply tension or loosen the tension in the XY drive. So you can make it as loose as you want for speed or slower for concentration on smaller precise areas of your specimen detail. Moving down, we have an Olympus Brightfield condenser with an iris diaphragm and it's focusable and also centrable with these two screws. Moving further down we have a field diaphragm which is necessary to complete colder illumination. We have coaxial coarse focus, one on each side of the microscope. The big knobs are for focus, coarse focus. The smaller knob is for fine focus. There's a tension adjustment here on the right side and a stage break on the right side, on the left side, which prevents you uh, from racking your specimen, ma specimen material into the objective lens. So you can put the brake on down low, and now no one can move it higher. Or you can release the brake, and it can go up higher as you desire. It's very nice when you lower the stage, and you've already preset it, you can come right up all the way to the focal point and you're right there in focus with the specimen. Moving just a little bit further down and to the right you have a set of filters. There's a, a light balancing daylight filter. There's a neutral density 6 and a neutral density 25 value filter. There's three filters all together. Moving back just a little bit you have um, a intensity control knob for controlling the intensity on this 12 volt 100 watt halogen lamp and you also have a preset button which allows you to preset the intensity at a, at a desired position so that when you turn the microscope on each time it goes to that pre-designated intensity. Moving just a little bit to the rear I want to show you this lamp housing. It's a 12 volt 100 watt lamp housing and uh, it's very large and it's vented so that when it gets hot, the uh, intensity or the the heat can dissipate quickly. There is a outlet for a dual viewer light um, light arrow, so that when you move the arrow around, it's it's illuminated with this intensity because of this control right here. On off and the outlet, and you also have um, the fuse box right here.
easily accessible. On top is a Allen wrench for most of these controls. So you can loosen things and take things off. How about does it? 